Uh, Mr. McCaffrey, could I have a word? If you want to talk to me, you need to make an appointment. <laughs> Funnily enough, I've been trying to do just that for weeks. The GMB isn't recognised at Sea Queen. We still represent a fair chunk of the workforce. You made quite a name for yourself out in Chile, didn't you? Seven farms closed, 400 job losses, mostly folk already living in shanty towns and two dollars a week. What's that got to do with you? We'll fight you every step of the way if you try to implement those redundancies without consultation. Are you threatening me? <laughs> no. But when folks see big companies coming in, buying up small firms, putting folk out of work, driving local people out of the areas, they're reminded of the Highland clearances. And that's a very emotive issue around here. One that can get MPs in their soapboxes, journalists at their word processors, and shareholders. Oh, well, they get very nervous. How long have you been at this, then? Eight years? Nine. And yet you still haven't won union recognition at Sea Queen? Or stopped a single plant from shutting down? It'll come. Any other job you'd have had your cards by now? Sold us out, Alan. Did I hell? I'm going to lose my house thanks to you. I don't care, Ian. The bastard's been at it again, sending out his Dear John letters. As in Dear John, your services are no longer required. And not just Dear John, Dear Ian, Dear Linda, Dear Hamish. He sacked half the workforce. I saved half the bloody jobs here, including yours, you wish. shit. And your own. Dear John still saved me. Someone's day somewhere a step up for every bloody job in this place. Every step of the way. And this is the thanks I get. It's all right for you. It's not personal, you know that. He hasn't let you go. End of the month, same as the others. Well, if you don't mind me saying so, Jim, I think you brought this on yourself. Agnes! If you'd kept your nose to the grindstone instead of in all this union business, you'd still have a job. Is that right? Oh, Linda, don't. Then how did you come to have a wee letter in your slot, Agnes? Well, they couldn't get rid of me. I'm the best worker they've got. I work hard, I'm never late, I'm never sick. You take personal time off, Agnes. But not for myself, for Ma. To take her to the doctor, see to her when she comes out of hospital. You don't care about that. You just want to get the same amount of work out half the workers. It made them take me back before. It's different, it's different. But we can fight it. We can fight it. He wouldn't get rid of me. He can he? Agnes! What about me? Come on, Agnes, don't keep reading it. It's easy for you to say they haven't sacked you. They haven't even sacked Aileen and she was working for the union. It wasn't for me. It was only to see to Ma. Come on, let me buy you a stiff drink. I don't drink, Denise. An Albanian orange juice, then. OK. You coming, Cathy? Maybe later. We'll be in the long bar. You all right, Hamish? <sighs> Gonna be awfully quiet around here without him. For me, you're wasting your time. No, I'm, I'm just thinking. I have to lock up. First day I came here, got all those fish, all those livers, spleens, hearts. I felt sick. I'd done it hundreds of times at home. 
But there are so many of them, just, just endless corpses. It was like a holocaust. I got used to it in the end. I suppose you get used to anything. The job's gone, Cathy. I'm off to Canada myself next week, taking over a new Sea Queen operation there. I can't help you this time. I know. You would if you could. It was you who sent that money. You've been so kind. Not kind enough, obviously. None of us are ever kind enough. Oh, Jesus, you said God would look after me. God helps those who help themselves. They got you to be such an arrogant bastard! Don't blame God for the sloppy working practices in this plant. I kept my side of the bargain. Matthew, chapter 20. When the vineyard owner went out and hired laborers throughout the day and then paid them all the same, one grumbled, saying, these last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who bore the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But the vineyard owner replied, did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? But it's a story. It's the word of God! About the kingdom of heaven. For the kingdom of heaven is like a vineyard owner. I know what it's about! It's about the promise. The promise that we can still enter the kingdom of heaven, no matter how much or how little we've suffered. And borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. You don't even believe. Oh, Christ, but I wish I did! And he will separate them one from another. You slept with Connor, didn't you? And the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. Answer and me! He will place the sheep at his right hand, but the goats at his you left. You slept with him! Yes. Why? What'd you let him for? He was lonely. And so was I. Horse! I haven't done anything for you! Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you. Go home, Kasha. You know well. I was hungry and you gave me to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. For whatsoever you did for the least of my brethren, you did it for me. You want to box up? Bastard. I was bad enough in the place in short hours. Oh, no hours. We had no hours at all at the factory. Look, Agnes, there's karaoke on the night. Fish. If I'm sacked, I'm sacked. What do we do about it now? We dig in for the fight, and trust me, we're not going to Agnes? Move. We're not helpless, not if we stick together. When your voice is loud enough, they've got to listen. previous 
Cages was affected, but we've lost almost everything in them. We've got divers down there now trying to salvage what they can, but until the assessor gets here, we just won't know. We could be looking at half a million quid's worth of damage here. Definitely sabotage this time. No doubt. The police are on the cages just now looking for evidence. Head office has been on the phone. To add to our troubles, the press are running this. Great. The local MP is demanding a meeting with you and your Hansen about the redundancies and the union's preparing to file a lawsuit. Perfect. We should have talked to them, Mr. McCaffrey. We still might be able to talk to them. I will not be blackmailed. Somebody's just caused half a million quid's worth of damage. How pissed off do they have to get before you will listen? Excuse me, we found this on the cages. Belong to anybody you know? Man, the dryer stopped. We need to put in another 10 pence. Just take them out and we'll dry them at home. I could bypass the coin mechanism. I've got a screwdriver. Just put them in the bag, Stephen. Hello? Agnes. I'm just putting up some posters for the union Kayla next week. I'm chairperson of the publicity committee, see? Since when? Last night. There was this emergency meeting, and at first they said they couldn't help me since I wasn't a member when I was made redundant. But then Bruce looked in his wee book and he found out I was a member after all. Must have been divine providence. Don't you think it was divine providence? Aye. Oh, you should have been there, Kathy. We were talking and shouting and singing. They taught me this song. It sounded a bit like a Christmas carol. The red flag. Aye, that's the one. Oh, they're going to have a fight on their hands, Kathy. These big companies can't just come here and put folk out of work. Right enough. Last night, a load of cages were ripped open. Sea Queen lost 50,000 fish. Every tourist on the lock's going to catch a salmon the day. <laughs> Con McGann is going to revive the tourist industry here overnight. Con McGann? Aye, the Irish boy, he's the one that did it. They picked him up this morning. All of a sudden, we're a major news incident. Can you belong before we see Mr McCaffrey being grilled by Jeremy <laughs> Paxman on news night? He's going to jail, Agnes. Who is? You were seen by Mrs. Dunn at the chip shop at a quarter past seven. What does that prove? That I fancied chips? But you were in the area at the time of the incident. Well, so was Mrs. Dunn, but you haven't arrested her. Mrs. Dunn hasn't just been given her cards by Sea Queen. And Mrs. Dunn's shirt wasn't found out on the cages where it got caught in a shackle and had to be that left behind. Mark McCaffrey shirt. identified it. Mark McCaffrey would identify a frilly blouse as mine if he thought he could nail me for this. If you'd like to take a seat, we'll note your complaint as soon as someone's free. 